Gameplay tags are hierarchical labels that can be used to identify, match, categorize, define states, or filter objects. For example, a gameplay tag might look like this. Item.weapon.sort Parent parts like item.weapon and item are also separate valid tags. Gameplay tags can be stored in gameplay tag container. This allows you to make different checks. For example, you can create other tags like item.weapon.bow and item.potion and store them in separate gameplay tag containers. Now you can check if these gameplay tag containers contain an item.weapon tag. Which means you don't care if it's a bow or a sword, you just want to know if it's weapon or not. You can also perform these operations or run queries to make more complex checks. Gameplay tags have the same performance as F names, which are essentially hash strings, so all operations are fast and lightweight. Gameplay tags are definitely better than adding bool or enum variables like is stunned or is poisoned and making casts to classes all over the place. You can instead use gameplay tags in almost every case. Abilities, actions, items, damage context, game events, statuses, and more. I even add them to my food. If you are still not convinced, gameplay tags are also used in gameplay ability system. If you don't know, the gameplay ability system was made by Epic Games for their game Paragon. It's a flexible framework for building attributes, abilities, buffs, and all that kind of stuff that you might find in RPG or MOBA titles. It's pretty complex, but I think it's worth checking it out, as they use it in Fortnite. And you can even find some job positions mentioning the gameplay ability system. Ok, enough talking, let's briefly see how to use these tags inside the engine. Create a gameplay tag container variable inside any object. Click manage gameplay tags. Select the source file and create a tag. One major advantage of this tag system is that you don't need to type text manually each time. You can easily select them in the editor's UI. Let's add more tags to see the hierarchy more clearly. Now we can build some logics that checks if this container has a specific tag. Also you can easily add and remove tags to any container at runtime and make game logic to react to it. For example, let's say this container is responsible for damage information. You can decorate this container on damage and add tags like damage type slash, damage status bleeding and damage critical. Other systems can check this container and do something with it like a buff that heals on critical strikes. That's the basic idea about gameplay tags in Unreal Engine. I hope you learned something new and find it useful for your projects. I'll leave some links in the description where you can find additional information about gameplay tags and their application. If you have some questions, you can join my social media and ask me there. Bye.